Joining us this morning to answer the latest questions about the coronavirus in our community, Dr. Hamil Kothri, the Chief Medical Officer for Dignity Health Central California Division. Dr. Kothri, good morning. Thanks for being with us, sir. Great to see you. Good morning, Maddie. Thank you. I want to first start off by talking about this new data out from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, um, raising questions about just how deadly the coronavirus is. At one point, you know, estimates early on were as high as 3 to 4 percent. At one point here in the U.S., it was thought to be around 1 percent. The CDC now putting it at around 0.4 percent. Can you put that into perspective for us? What does this new data tell us? So what it does tell us is what we've done is a phenomenal job at limiting the spread of this virus. We've social distanced, we've practiced our hand hygiene, we've done everything we've told our citizens to do, and I think we've, we have overcome this virus for the most part. Tell us a little bit about um, the death rate uh, of the coronavirus. We've, you know, had a lot of questions about this, and um, we, a lot of people have talked about, well, how does it compare to the flu? Because that just gives us a good perspective, I think, of, you know, how much more dangerous this is or not. So can you kind of put it into that perspective for us, what we know now about the virus? Sure. So typically, in, an, in any given year, the flu will be responsible for about 3 to 6 percent of the deaths um, in our country. And so you can see at 0.4 to 0.5 percent, this virus is a lot less deadly than we originally thought. Uh, it took a lot less lives than we originally thought. I don't think it's less deadly. I just think we did everything right. Okay. So going forward, what does that kind of tell us about what needs to happen when this virus emerges in the fall? So we already know what we need to do to take care of it. And I think we can get the death rate down to less than 0.1%. Um, with everything that we've got in place already, everything we know about it, everything that we've prepared for in the hospitals, we've got contingency plans everywhere. All right, well, that is some good news going forward. Um, all right, let's talk about our local numbers because you called it earlier this week when we spoke on Wednesday. Um, we had only had five deaths reported, or no, I'm sorry, not five deaths. We'd only had five new cases reported on Tuesday, which was a drastic drop from what we've been seeing. You said you thought that was a blip, and it turned out to be so. Uh, this week, we've had an average of about 50 new cases announced every day over the last few week weeks. Do you expect that trend to continue, uh, an average of around 50 cases or more, or or less uh, each day, or do you foresee a spike uh, in the wake of Memorial Day weekend now that we're almost a week out? So the average uh, amount of time that it takes to develop symptoms is between two to five days. So I, I think that 50 cases is going to go on for another day maybe, and then you'll start seeing a decline in the number of cases that are out there. Now, also having said that, we also know that, that there's a lot of people getting out, out there getting tested. We know 25% of the population does have it. so. You may see a steady um, rate, but I don't think we'll get a spike at all. And who do you think should be being tested right now? Do you think that we should still just go to get tested if you have symptoms? Uh, we know that certain testing sites are recommending you go in and get tested, even if you're asymptomatic, and do it on a regular basis. So ideally, if we have enough tests, I'd want to test every single person in Kern County, and that way we can cohort the people that have it away from the people that don't have it. Um, currently, we don't have that capacity, but I think we're building up to it. So we're still recommending if you have symptoms, get tested. But I think now that there's other test sites, I think a lot of other people are going in just for curiosity's sake. Okay, and then really quickly here, uh, as the county begins to uh, reopen more, uh, the approach to guidelines in the hospitals, uh, there's been a lot of confusion about visitor policies in local hospitals. Can you tell us what it's like right now uh, at local Dignity Health Hospitals? Sure. And we're still limiting the number of pay, um, visitors for patients. We are letting uh, people come in and, and we're following a lot of what our uh, California Health Public Department has told us. So we are letting people come in for uh, pregnancy. We're letting one visitor for them. Um, end of life cases, we're letting visitors for that. Also, if you're going to have a surgery, we're letting a visitor come in. We're looking to even expand that out to if you're getting discharged home, we're letting a visitor, trying to let a visitor come in so that they can help you with discharge instructions. So we're, we're trying to be as lenient as we can, but we have to follow strict guidelines that are set forward by the state. Absolutely. We don't want any new outbreaks starting because of that. All right, Dr. Cothry, thanks so much for being with us this morning again, sir. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you.